Hey guys, Paul here from Melbourne Performance Coaching Complete Personal Trainer Podcast. So yesterday we talked about sports specific training and I started talking a little bit about, the peri- I talked a little bit about periodization. So how to put together a program over the course of you know, eight weeks or whatever it was, however long the training program was, based on the demands and requirements on that athlete. Uh, so today what I wanted to talk about and touch on was exercise selection during the training process for athletes because a lot of people, um, a lot of people will go straight for sports specific exercises and a lot of people will say you just need to do the big lifts and it like treat them more like a powerlifter. And there's an element of truth to both and there's an element of not so, being not so true to both as well. So the first thing with that is sports specific lifts become more important throughout the athlete's training journey. So if a client is a beginner in training, so they've got a very low training age, their lifts don't need to be specific. The reason being that their lifts don't need to be specific to their task at hand is that they just need to build general strength all over. So a well-rounded, full body program that doesn't really have a whole bunch of complexity will work really well for that client because we want to just get them to baseline levels of strength and movement competency. If a client is highly advanced, incredibly strong, then yes, they're going to need to do more specific lifts to train the energy systems, the directional preferences, the force vectors and the velocities that are specific to improving the performance in their sporting activity. So it goes on a spectrum of specificity from general to really very specific to that particular sport. So example being, if I had someone come to me for basketball and they wanted to, you know, get stronger, I was like, all right, cool. How long have you been playing basketball? Oh, two years. How long have you been training in the gym? I haven't. I wouldn't worry about doing any basketball specific workouts. But if I was someone who'd been training in the gym for a while, they're squatting a lot of weight, they're deadlifting, they're pretty good. I would be a lot more uh, inclined to use drills that are specific to basketball, like for example, lateral step up to a hop, for as a random example off the top of my head. Now, the thing that you'll also find with sports specific training is someone goes through their tra- training age from a beginner to a more advanced client, is that your directional preferences are going to change a little bit more. So, when you're working with beginners, and I said I'd touch on this yesterday is you want to stick most of your exercises in the sagittal plane. So you want to exert dominance and control and competency in the sagittal plane before you start adding frontal plane and transverse plane challenges. Once you've got some competency and strength in the frontal plane, then you want to look at getting control over the frontal and the transverse plane. So being able to resist rotation, resist side flexion, start loading up your weights with those particular patterns. And then you look at exploding, uh, creating force throughout that. So you can build that out over time. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that there's no real guidelines for this in terms of you have to do that movement for this particular sport. This is something where the art of coaching really comes into it. So you need to do a needs analysis on your athlete, on the client who's in front of you. And from then, you need to work out what movements that they need to do. So for a soccer player, for example, they're going to have different sports specific movements to a baseball player based on obviously the differences in their sport. That's why with all these options here, there's no real templates that you can really follow here. Whereas a powerlifter, for example, the template is build them up to a squat bench dead for an Olympic weightlifter, to a full snatch and to a full clean and jerk. The other thing with sports training for athletes is you need to keep a few other things in mind throughout the duration of the programming uh, that you're working with. The first one is to maintain a high degree of movement skill and make sure their training doesn't make them any worse. So in when what I mean by that is they should still have a pretty good movement screen the whole way through. They should always have some kind of, I guess, corrective strategies to help repair the tissue damage that they do from the sport themselves. So every sport that you do, every activity you do has a degree of specialization inherent in that and that specialization has a trade-off. Not that specialization is bad, particularly if you're working with an elite athlete, specialization is why they're an elite athlete, but there's a trade-off there. What we need to do is intelligently decide whether that trade-off is a negative performance or a positive performance, and then how much of a risk factor it is as well. So we're gonna look at a sprinter, for example. We may see that they have what we perceive to be limited ankle mobility and ankle restriction. 
when in reality they've got a higher degree of stiffness in their Achilles tendon, that's going to give them uh, more explosiveness and more bounce in their sprint for a higher performance output. So a lot of these decisions you have to make have to be based on the uh, case of an athlete and the person in front of you. And sometimes the risk will justify the reward and sometimes it won't. It's going to have to be an individual decision for you. So if that person is getting recurrent Achilles tendinosis issues or hamstring strains, it may not be worth the risk. We may need to do something to solve that. If that person's absolutely problem free and sending PBs, hey, go for it. Keep it moving forward. Uh, the next thing we want to do for sports specific training, these are all just different ideas, is that for some sports you may want to build armor. So by armor, I mean hypertrophy. Say you're dealing with a contact sports person, the more armor they have generally, the better off they're going to be uh, to a point unless it affects their uh, running and movement performance. So for like rugby players, like chest, back, shoulders, uh, gonna be very, very useful for buttressing the forces of tackles. Uh, neck strengthening is another one too. So you're looking at strengthening areas that are commonly injured in the sport. So if you look at any sport, it's very easy to go on Google and quickly type in a bunch of issues that that sport leads to. So what's the injury occurrence rate? Knee injuries in basketball and soccer, whatever it is. From your program, build in areas to build up the tissue tolerance in those areas so they can tolerate a higher degree of load. There is no real training that you can do that will prevent injuries or make your clients bulletproof. That's a lot of shit. No one's ever made anyone bulletproof. If they did, I wish, you know, be awesome because there'd be a lot of superheroes around getting shot and not having any damage. What we need to do is we need to think of how can we just increase the tissue tolerance and the resilience in that area so it can have a higher degree of load. So for basketball players, for example, lots of development of the quadricep area around the patella tendon and the quadricep tendon, build that up so they can tolerate a higher degree of jumping, cutting, lateral movement, and they therefore perform better in their sport and also have a lower likelihood not totally eliminate because you won't do that, but hopefully a lower likelihood of injury so they can spend more time in the court, more time in the pitch, more time in the field, so they can practice their sport specific moves a lot more. So guys, with exercise selection for sport, it is goes through a process of general to specific over time based on the level of the athlete and the level of training age that they have. Master the sagittal plane and get strong in the expressing force there and then start to learn to control the frontal and transverse plane and then look at expressing force and power in the frontal and transverse plane as someone gets better in their athletic journey. From there, look at maintaining a base degree of movement quality and build resilience and armor in the tissues that are likely to get injured undertaking that sport. So guys, hopefully that's helped you out. Any questions, let me know. I'll be speaking to you soon.